Today we're going to be discussing bloodborne pathogens and our exposure risks that we have in healthcare as caregivers. Bloodborne pathogens are infectious materials that are carried in the blood and can cause disease in human bodies. Workers that can be exposed to these things are at higher risk as caregivers or anyone that is in the healthcare profession. Types of these could include hepatitis B or hepatitis C or HIV. OSHA provides a full list of guidelines to employers for how we can protect our staff and reduce the risk of spreading any sorts of types of blood disorders or infectious disease. So one of the steps to, that we perform in order to reduce any risk of spread is creating an exposure plan. These processes are taken and put into effect at our agency so that they lower any sorts of exposures that might carry through clients or other caregivers. We write this plan up and it is kept on file at our office and part of that plan is to educate all of our staff on bloodborne pathogens and exposure risk every single year. Educating and communicating this plan ensures that all the staff know the dangers and how to prevent any sort of exposure and report any incidents if they feel like they have been exposed. Training is done at hire, but also we review this plan each year to make sure that everyone knows of any changes and updates that we've made to this plan. One type of bloodborne pathogen is hepatitis B. If you recall that when you were hired, you would have gotten the option to either take a hepatitis B vaccine or decline it if you've already taken it or also provide a record that you have taken it to the office. These are covered free by your employment if you're working in healthcare. If you work anywhere in healthcare, the office or the agency or the hospital will offer this to you at hire. If you decline it in the beginning, you can also come back and say that you would prefer to go ahead and take the vaccine and then the office will reimburse you after you're finished with the hepatitis B series. Um, there are gloves and PPE that is provided by the office as well to protect you against getting hepatitis B, but the best defense against catching hepatitis B or being exposed to it is being vaccinated before any sort of exposure. Anytime that you feel that you've been exposed, you should report to the agency right away. You want to make sure that you receive any medical attention that you may need and also get tested if you feel like you have been exposed to any blood or um, any sort of bodily fluids, any sort of exchange, and right away so to make sure that you don't spread it any further with anyone else. Um, you always want to act early. It could be nothing, but we also want to make sure that you're safe and that your clients are safe. So if you feel like there's been any sort of exchange by accident, you want to make sure that we get exams to you and your client to make sure that both of you are safe and healthy and that there's no issues or concerns involved. The agency may not know if the client has any sort of bloodborne pathogen. And likewise, we don't keep those sort of records on you as well. So if any time that there is an exchange, we need to get medical examinations on both of you to make sure that there are no problems. So there are ways that you can prevent contamination with your clients. You always want to make sure that you keep your areas clean and sanitary, making sure that you're using those proper disinfectants after completing any sort of tasks that might invo involve some sort of bodily fluids or any sort of blood or exchange. Since we work with people that are sick, sometimes they do have open wounds and things like that. So making sure you're wearing your proper PPE when you're handling anything like that, that you're help helping them bathe or that you're helping them move in the bed, making sure you're wearing those gloves to protect your hands and any sort of open wounds you might have on your hands. And likewise, protecting them as well by making sure you're wearing your PPE will prevent you from exchanging any sort of body bleed fluids with them while you're working with your clients. Making sure that you're using those proper, proper receptacles. Anytime that things have to be um, disposed of, your clients should make sure that they're using sealed containers if needed. And also if y'all are using towels and things like that when bathing, that those things are cleaned properly afterwards and that there is a dirty bin clearly marked. Um, and separated from anything that are clean linens so that those things don't mix together.
regulated waste is anything that might have um, any sort of blood or urine or anything like that on it. So it always should be handled with extreme care. So as I mentioned before, making sure that those things are separated with your clean and dirty. Anytime that your clients have to use needles either for medications or for checking blood because they're diabetic, we should always make sure that those things are sealed sharp in sharps containers or a sealed um, sort of disposable unit. You can use like a detergent bottle or something like that as long as it's um, sealed up and that it does not have anything that can be punctured through by a needle. Um, you always want to make sure those things are clearly labeled. So if your client is using something as a biohazard bin, that every that it's labeled so that everyone knows this is biohazard. If you are using a sharp container, then those are clearly labeled. But if they're using something else, then we want to make sure that no one is, you know, touching that or disposing of it or anything like that um, in a in an improper way. There are ways that we're supposed to expose of this that follows state and local laws. And if you are using some sort of sharp container or something else, such as a detergent bottle, then it needs to be duct taped and then disposed of that way. So we want to make sure that our clients are trying to follow those guidelines anytime that that is going on in their home, but also to keep you and anyone else in the home safe so that they realize that what that is being used for. So caregivers and our scope of care. If we're providing care as caregivers, we should never be dealing with any types of injections or blood withdrawal or anything like that. But sometimes we do provide um, direct care to our clients where we have to touch their skin or um, something along those lines. So that is why we always wear PPE in those situations. Um, if you are working with your client, you always want to make sure that you're keeping your hands covered nose and mouth, eyes covered, and that will reduce your risk anytime you're working with them. Now that we're in the middle of a pandemic, we're keeping masks on all the time. So that will also protect you. But even outside of that, before COVID, if you feel like, you know, there might be some splash or something while you're working with your client, then you um, might feel safer wearing a mask over your face and nose. Um, when you're working with your client and doing ADLs with them, um, anytime you're touching their skin, if you're assisting with personal care, if you are um, just have if you just end up having an incident that glo the gloves on your hands will protect you from any sort of blood exchange. So just make sure that you have those in place all the time when you're in providing any sort of direct care and touching your client in any way. So universal precautions, we have talked about this before, but universal precautions is just assuming that every person that you do care for or touch is ill. We assume that everyone is infectious and that way we treat everyone the same. So instead of picking and choosing who we wear gloves with, we wear gloves with everyone. Anytime that we are providing care, we make sure that we always have our mask on. That ensures that our client is always safe from anything that we might have as well as making sure that we are safe from anything that they might be have or their family members might have as well. So there's a couple of things that we always want to remember when we are um, preventing any sort of exposure risk. Anytime that you feel like you may have been exposed, even if you are not sure, you want to make sure that you wash your hands um, first before get yourself you know, to an area where you can make sure that your hands are washed Use soap and water, wash them thoroughly, and make sure that anything that you feel like might have been touched by something is thoroughly cleaned off. Then you want to make sure that you report any incidents um, to our agency. We are doing that to make sure that you are protected as well as the client. So we want to make sure that if there is a medical exam that's needed, that you get that and that your client gets that as well. So make sure that you report right away, even if it's after hours, and let us know that I feel like something might have happened and let us know everything that happened during the incident. You also want to make sure that you ask questions if you're concerned. We provide caregiving for most of our clients, but if you have a question about something, is this something I need to be concerned about or I have a question about this, we want to make sure we get that answered for you so that you are informed and safe when you're providing care. Always make sure that you're wearing your PPE when you go into your client's home. Make sure that you have your gloves on. Um, always make sure you have your mask on. 
Um, since we're in the middle of a pandemic, that should be true for everyone, but always make sure that you're protecting yourself as soon as you go into your, your client's home and you're ready to work. Always stay alert and aware when you're practicing care. That will help with the reduction of almost every sort of incident, making sure that you are paying attention to what you're doing, what you're touching, um, what needs to be cleaned and what is dirty so that you can make sure that you're, you know, have your head in the game anytime that you're providing care to your clients. Always keep your work area clean, safe, disinfected. Anything that is spilled, make sure that that is wiped and cleaned appropriately so that it doesn't have any sort of things left on that counter that shouldn't be there. You want to make sure that when you're helping your clients, if you're doing any sort of personal care with them as bathing, or if you have a client that's incontinent, that everything is cleaned afterwards and that it's clearly labeled on what is dirty and what is still good to use for your client. Following these tips will really help with any sort of risk. But again, as we always say, please remember to report if you find anything or something happens at the client's home that you feel like needs to be told to us and has caused any sort of risk of exposure. If you have any questions about this video, please give us a call at the office and there is a quiz that will follow this that will complete your training for this month. Thank you.